You just only need to say it with your tongue, out loud, that's all. Nothing, there is no magic. Okay, I know. If I promise you, I will. Just okay. not in these circumstances. I will tell you something. L listen, what, what this is, you are going against the agreement. <laughs> you cannot hold me. No, I hold you. And if we, both sides, if we affirm about the existence of God, and then we'll discuss about if there is God, then there should be a faith, correct? Yeah? God, God created us. There is, should be a faith in this God. And this faith, what God wants from us. And then after that, we'll demonstrate this. And then we'll see which faith is the one should be followed. And then after that, we'll come to what is Islam. I, mean, I understand from all the faiths, this is probably the one that makes sense the most. Islam. Yes. Good. So at, least, so at least if we affirm the existence of God, and if we affirm what God wants from us, that means the conclusion, Islam is the truth, correct? To you. And let me... I guess, yes. But yeah, that, it's not as easy. I know, I know. It's not as easy. I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm saying because we need to demonstrate that if you say if there is a true faith, then it should be Islam, correct? Yeah? Do you have any other ideas? Other faith that could be correct or not? Well, if you completely discard the God idea, yeah. that would be the other All right. The one that I grew up with. All right, okay. So let's discuss about one bit by bit. But the question is, if we affirm all of that, if we affirm about the existence of God, if we affirm what God wants from us, so God has a faith, that we, have, we have, should have a faith in God, and the true faith is Islam, will you accept to be Muslim? Can I say maybe? What? Can I say maybe? Uh, I don't know if I'm ready to accept the whole thing. No, 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 what I'm saying, because let me tell you something. Like, for example, uh, you, when you are doing, for example, if you, you're doing university level, correct, or something yeah. like that. So when doing a research, you affirm certain things, the conclusion is this. So there should be an objective for the conclusion. There should be something yeah, but there out are of it. Ways that you can conclude yeah, 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 I know. I mean, generally, this generally, there are multiple ways, but I'm saying, if there is a true faith, which is if Islam makes sense to you, according to your own sense, not to mine, then the, the consequence is to accept Islam because we shouldn't be denying the truth, correct? Yeah? Do you agree with this? Yeah. Yeah? You agree with this structure? Yeah. Good. Let's start from the first thing. Do you believe there is higher power created this universe? I can see that. So there should be higher power, yeah? This higher power, is it, does it have knowledge? To do things or it doesn't have knowledge to do things it would probably have knowledge. so so it is a power great power and it has knowledge that means it should have independent will correct meaning will decide to do things to choose to do things choose not to do things we decide to do things for the power yeah this this higher power is not a power without knowledge it's a power with knowledge yeah so so it has a knowledge it's so intelligent that means it has a it has a, uh, it has a decision to decide to do things and not to do things, correct? Because that knowledge is to be implemented. Yes, you agree? Yeah. So if you have knowledge, you implement it. You decide to do things, and someone who doesn't, someone who's insane, doesn't have the knowledge, cannot decide to do what, what they would do. But if there is someone who has, who's sane, for example, a guardian does as a human being, will decide to do things and decide not to do things, which means has independent will. Yeah. Yeah, but then doesn't it come down to character in a way? Because Before we come to the character, but before we talk about the character, let's talk about, let's agree on these concepts. Yeah, Those are concepts. So, a higher power, yeah, and absolute knowledge. It has, all, it's all knowing, knowing everything. Yeah, since it knows everything, this power. So, it has independent will, meaning there is no one telling this power to do things and not to do things. It means we'll do, like, a, a, like you could say, uh, self, self conscious, you could say, like decision to decide things, to decide to do things, not to do things, basically. So, if you agree with these things, that means you agree about the existence of God. That's exactly, exactly the same point which we, if you agree that there is, and that's a definition of God, generally. All powerful, that's, with all faiths, regardless. Yeah. Yeah. With all faiths, all powerful all-knowing and has independent will. All faith, they are, that's the definition of God. Powerful to create everything and as well have knowledge. They don't create just only for, for the sake of nothing. Create things and as well with knowledge. 
but yeah. can it just be nature itself? Now, if, does the nature has knowledge? And it might not. Let's let's see the nature. Let's discuss the nature. Now, this nature, generally, nature is random, correct? Well, we might see it as random, but it might not be. So does it have a self-conscious? Use your analogy. Do you think nature has its self-conscious? No, but we couldn't know. Like, we live for such a short time. We yeah, I, I know. But, but in terms of nature, what do you mean by nature? Do you have it's everything around us, you know, nature. So the nature around us. Why we are alive. Okay, the yeah. nature around us. One second. The nature around us created us. Evolution, maybe. Yeah. But, by the way, evolution doesn't say. It doesn't say there is no God. For you to know, and evolution doesn't answer the question. Evolution. There are many, many even theories against evolution in terms as a theory, because here, basically, the evolution says. So there are some certain examples, there are certain practices. For example, the nature will, will, for example, things will be evolved, and then after that, if it doesn't work, will evolve in something else until it becomes the perfect one, or the, the one which survives, yes? Do we have examples of the things that didn't survive? No. So basically, the point is, we don't have examples of the thing that, for example, look at the eyes, your eyes are here. Do you have example of the eyes in, the, in, the, in here, in the knees, or the eyes somewhere else? And then later on, the nature decided, okay, let's put the eyes up there because it will do that. And if that, and see here, yeah, all these I actually things. Actually, have a question about that. If I can. Yeah. So, does the Quran disprove evolution? Because the Quran doesn't doesn't disprove the does Quran. The Quran disprove certain things. The Quran disprove about us as a human being that we evolved. There is no disproof that Allah. Quran confirmed that we, God has created us directly. Our father Adam and our mother Eve was created directly from God. So that's what Quran confirms. But can you say that we were created from clay, which could have been the bedrocks of evolution, in the microbes that evolved from water? Be, be, before we go, to, we go into this, why we, again, evolution is a theory. Evolution is a theory which is not even, you know, it's not a fact, not necessarily a fact. Yes, it is an overwhelming kind of, as a, as a theory. Many people, you know, accept it, believe it in, in it. But, but still, it's a theory because there are many gaps in it. There are many gaps, lots of gaps. And we know, for us, I, I, mean, I'm, I studied mathematics, yeah? And for me, for the theory to be theory in mathematics, that we shouldn't have a single counterexample against it. If I have, for any theory in math, any single counter example against it, that means it's not a theory. It's a hypothesis, assumption, you name it. So that's why actually evolution, because we have many counter examples against it. So that's why it's more into hypothesis or more into assumption. So it's, people assume it is this is what happened, but there is no. And it's not based on facts. It's based on, you know, uh, they say observation. They say based on observation, yes? Have they observed the evolution? They say based on observation. Have they observed the evolution? No. So that's why even it, even it didn't reach even it's, uh, I believe it's more into assumption, assuming things, not even hypothesis. To say even hypothesis is greater than that, because you need to come some kind of some kind of observation to make it hypothesis. Yeah. So now going back to the point. So that's why to say when it comes to the discussion of the Quran, we'll come to the point of the Quran. What what Quran says. But let's affirm certain things. Now. If we say this nature that you see, you see here, we disprove kind of the nature cannot create things out of nothing. So because if we are in the nature and the nature are in us, yeah, where the nature came from. Why I'm saying this? Because you said this universe was created through the nature, which means and the nature which is this universe. That's what you mean, what you mean by nature. Yes, the nature is this universe. So this universe did it either created itself by itself. Or it was there forever, for infinity. Or a greater power created this universe. One of them. So if you say it created itself by itself, it has to pre-exist before existence. Which is totally false. Just to say you give birth to yourself. Which is... Which is huh? Let's use our own reasoning. 
Yeah. Even then, there would have been something that created. We'll, we'll come. We'll come to the point. I will discuss it. But I will not. I will not stay. I will not go away from it. We'll discuss it. We'll discuss it even about God. We'll discuss it. Now, either we came from nothing. Can nothing produce anything? Can nothing produce anything? No. So we say we we cannot be say we came from nothing. The universe cannot come from nothing. Yeah. So that's we we say that we eliminate these choices. When we eliminate it, we don't discuss it back again. It means we it's eliminated. It's out of the story. Yeah. So the firstly, the the the, the universe to be created from nothing is eliminated. Yes. The second thing that the universe created itself by itself. So you need few things. You need first of all consciousness before the consciousness existed. You see the point. Meaning, we said to you three things, all-powerful, all-knowing, independent will. It should have this nature, should have consciousness to decide to create itself from itself. Does it make sense to you? Can it make sense to you? Okay, I see your point. Can it make sense to you? Yes or no? No. Yeah, basically, you should exist before your existence, and you should have a consciousness to decide to create yourself before you existed, which is nonsense. And again, so are we eliminating this? The universe or the nature was there forever, infinity. Have you studied math? Do you know what infinity is? What infinity is? Do you think, do you think the number infinity exists? Does it exist? I'm a mathematician, so I know. Yeah, tell me, please. Infinity doesn't exist. There is no number called infinity. It's a concept. concept. Yeah. Good. So it's a concept. So there is nothing in the existence called infinity. So this universe within the existence. So to say it was there infinity or always was there, that's impossible. As the universe, because we are within this existence. Yeah, or created by a higher power. So we eliminated these four, three of them. So came from nothing, created ourselves by ourselves, infinity, then we came by higher power. Yeah? Now let's discuss this higher power. Higher power which is independent from this, from this universe, separate from this. This higher power, has three characteristics, going back to the point. All-powerful, all-knowing, has independent will. You agree? Now, you could give the assumption to say, oh, okay, this this is the definition of God, basically. That's well, this is what that's, so oh, this is the definition of God. You can, that's God. You, can there be more than one? If a being like this is possible to exist. Yeah. That's what we call it a necessity to, to exist. But let, without going into the philosophical argument, but let me tell you that. Allah says in the Quran, if there are two gods, if there are other gods than Allah, then they're going to be hierarchy. How? Two gods, all powerful, all knowing, has independent will. Don't you think they could clash? You know? Yes, definitely, because think about it, yeah? Suppose one of them decide to create this universe, the other one decide not to create this universe. Yeah, but they could create different universes. Oh, yeah, they could do whatever, but I'm talking about if they have two powers, two, uh, you know, they have, both of them are powerful, both of them are knowledgeable, both of them has independent will, eventually they will clash, yeah? And Allah confirmed this in the Quran, if they are two gods, then each one will be higher, will be above the others. And so because one of them has to be the dominant. Isn't that more of a human concept? No, no. Because here, because you give the human concept about the existence of other gods. You brought this. You brought this concept. You are assuming this concept. And then the answer from the human concept. If you assume this as a human concept, the answer from the human concept, this will happen. But isn't there a possibility that... These higher beings are a lot more complicated than we could ever imagine. It's, yeah, it's something we cannot comprehend. Yeah. True, that's God. Again, that's how it is. 
God something or something we cannot comprehend with our own mind, we cannot comprehend with our own imagination, something beyond our imagination, beyond our comprehension, beyond. So that is God. And that's the key thing. And because it's beyond our... You take your, the camera back, you take oh, it back. You're, you're blocking me, that's why I have Shep. I don't know. If I move it, I can't, because look. Okay, I can't, I don't know what you do. Sorry, Shep. Yeah, yeah, just move it back. Yes, yeah. that's, that's perfect now. Okay, yeah. all right. So it is beyond our imagination. That's why, we. that's God. That's basically, this is the definition of God. I, and I think you have allergy to call it God, yes? You have problem to say it's God? Do you have any problem just to say it's God? The word God has been configured so many times. I know, but leave what the, what, what's in your imagination. Leave what is the concept of the people, what the people impose to you as God. Leave it and just accept the concept as the, it's God. This is what God. This is what all the philosophers, for example, was all what the people of knowledge is, all what the, what, what the, the prophets and messengers affirm, that's God. All powerful. All-knowing has independent will. And since it's all-powerful, all-knowing has independent will, all-powerful, when you say all-powerful, means doesn't need a previous power to create it. So that's why, what, what I mean by all-powerful. So that's why, basically, he is the unmoved mover. The one moves everything, and nothing moves him. That's God. Do you accept this? Okay. So you accept there is, there is God, yeah? I, okay. I was brought up very spiritually, so... We'll discuss the spiritual aspect. Let's, just, let's talk about this. The other spiritual... We'll come to the spiritual aspect of it. No, it's more like what I want to say. The sort of... What I would have imagined is beyond all of this. It's like a collection of souls, maybe. No. Like somewhere where we came from. Again, I the, guess you could call it God. Okay. Actually, no, because the souls is a human concept. God has created our souls, yeah? So this is a creation. The souls are a creation of God. And God is not, you know, the creation is not similar to God in any sort of form. So what we are as a human, yeah? We are not similar to God in any sort of form. We're not similar to God. Neither in our souls, because we have souls, that means our souls lives and dies, and God has the, you know, the one, the one, the one who gives the lives. So what makes difference? Between us and God or people? The difference between people, basically, in terms of what? In terms of souls? Like, I would have thought that souls are what makes us individuals different. No, you mean, let me like, tell you something. There is two things. Yeah. There is, there is the soul, there is the body, and there is the self, yourself. Yeah. Some they say as, as souls, some of them they say your spirit. Yeah. So basically, let's use the souls, as you mentioned, because again, the definition of souls has more than one meaning in English. But let's use soul as, a, as individuals. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So basically, there is a spirit, and there is the body. When the spirit attached to the body, then it becomes the soul or yourself, who you are. Yeah? You, your name is? Chilla. Chilla. So the soul of, the, the, the spirit of Chilla, whom God has created, and the body of Chilla, when they are, when they get together, they become the soul of Chilla, then sees this individual being, a human being, that's who you are. So where does the spirit come from? The creator. Created the spirit and created us, created our bodies and created our spirit. And that's, that's why this spirit, when it's in, attached to the body, we, ha we have the life, and when it's detached from the body, then we die. And what that's happens to the spirit? And that is the, that's the question which we wanted to answer now through the answer, if we accept now the concept of God, let's discuss now why God has created us. This is the next question. So, do you agree now about the concept of God? Well, uh, by the way, I will answer all your questions. And I'm happy to answer your questions. But let's move by, one by one. Order. So, now me and you have accepted there is one God. Yes? It can't be more than one. It has to be one God. Yes? So this one God has created this universe and he created us. What is the purpose he has created us? What's the purpose? What are we doing here? What's the purpose that he has created this sophisticated body that we have in this sophisticated process? Spirit and, and, and bodies become souls and us and our consciousness and all of these things. What is the purpose? What are we doing here? Are we created to eat and drink and reproduct? Or there is a deeper meaning for our creation? 
What do you think? So let's 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 let's. I like I like the way of elimination. I like how it is. Let's say we are created to eat and drink and reproduce. Suppose this. Now the question is, animals they do better job than us, and animals basically they do better job than us. And and they and they don't cause pollution. They don't cause destruction. They live in harmony, and that that's it. So that means our intellectual ability gives us more responsibility than the other animals. That means our existence has a deeper meaning than other animals. Do you agree? Yeah? Now this deeper, now this deeper meaning, so definitely is not eating and drinking and reproduction. So there's more than that. So let me assume this, let's agree on it, if we agree on it. So the assumption which I'm assuming, I'm, I'm proposing now here, to say God has created us basically to serve him. And when I say him, doesn't mean his agenda or something, but him, as a, yeah? So God has created to serve him. How? In every single thing that we do in this life, to serve him. Like when we are helping one another, we are serving God. When we are being kind to the nature, we are serving God. When we are kind to the animals, we are serving God. When we are kind to our parents, being good to our parents, we are serving God. Whatever we do in this life, when we are, when we are uh, even, you know, going uh, to study or, or having a job and earning money to look after, after ourselves and our families, we are serving God. Then wouldn't we know this from birth? Like, wouldn't we, you know, just like become alive and then go, okay, this is my purpose? You, you had it before. You were born with this. You knew it before. You were born inclined to believe in this. You were born because that's where the Prophet Sallallahu he confirmed that we are born upon our natural disposition, meaning in a client to believe in God. We are born with this. But what happened? Your parents, the society, the community around you, everyone will drive you away from this. And that's why all of these thoughts and all of these ideas came to you. But if you go back to the root, you're born with this. You're born and fully equipped to do that. That's why you have your hands, have your legs, of your eyes, all of these things to serve that purpose. But how do we know this? Now, here, yeah, that's how we know this. That we are inclined from the Yeah, by the way, by the way, there are many research by the way done on this, for you to know. In Japan, there are, the, the, uh, yeah, they have done... research in Japan where the people are atheistic, there's, there's no God in their society, and they even they did a poll on, on, I don't know how many kids they've tested, but they, the, they, they, most of them were inclined, the children, toddler, like at toddler age, three, four years old, were inclined to believe in God. In a single God, not many gods, not single. Yeah. They, they, it's a natural belief. Everyone is born upon a belief that there is. You can't look around at this earth and see that and imagine that, that there's not a higher power controlling it. There's too much perfection in this world. So, so the point is, so they have done research about this. That's one side. On the other side, this affirmed in the Quran, yeah, and affirmed in the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet peace be upon him, his Hadith, confirmed this. So these things are found in the Quran. That's how we take the source of knowledge for us. Now, I will come to, but even though there's a conclusion, the Quran to come to believe in the Quran and the Sunnah, there's a conclusion. That's the idea which we said we need to conclude to that. But before we that conclusion, you know, the research being done. So if you leave kids on an island, if you're born from the born, from the birth, they will be inclined to believe in one God, basically. That's how it is. Because if you see the things around it, because all these, it can't be with randomness. So we're inclined to this. We, the things around us and everything can't be random. It has to be, came from a source. Which source? Which is the, the God who has created us. Now that's, that's one side. That's one side. The research idea is interesting. So okay. could you communicate with toddlers about this giant idea? They, they ask people who are like as, as young as three and four, when they start speaking, they ask them and then they found it. Which is even in atheist families. But if they don't, never heard about the concept. That's my point. My point is they are inclined to believe in a higher power that's taking care of them, but that's looking the after. Them. How you ask the questions? What? You can manipulate kids to say certain things with certain. But they are. They came from atheist families. So if you could manipulate, that they should be manipulated from their parents, correct? Yeah, but the same way as you put me through the elimination. Process. Now I will come to. I'm saying. By the way, for me. For me, even for me, this is not a source of information for me, yeah. of the truth. But for me, 
I'm just using it to tell you that these things, they have done research, and this research, they found it, this, is not my saying, is of people who studied psychology of the children, and they say this, not me, researcher, professors at universities, maybe, you know, they are bigger than me in terms of the, in terms of studying psychology of the kids on all of these things. So they have done this research, they have said this, not me. I'm just saying what they have said. And those people who are not Muslims who said that. But my point is that they have done a research and they confirmed this. Now for us, as us as a human being, what is the purpose? I'm, I said to you that the purpose is to, it is to, you know, to serve this God. How we came to this now, without questioning what happened to you since you were a child until now, now you are here, you know now what you what you should do. You now you we agreed that you believe in one God. You agree that God has created you for a purpose. And I assume to you this purpose is to serve God. Now the question is either you deny this or you don't deny this. If you deny that, if you deny this assumption, then I will say to you, when you have you have, do you have a parents? Yeah. Are you good to them? Yeah. Why you have to be good to them? Because one second. Why you have to be good to them? How they raised me to be respectful. Just because they raised you to be respectful? Why you respect them? What's the, why you think if they are in need or something, you will help them or be good to them and be nice to them, to help them if they need help? Why do you have to do that? From atheistic point of view. It's just what you learn throughout life. You learn how to treat people. Where, where this came from? Where this came from? Community, family. And this community, where it came from? Where all this, where, where is the root of all? We're not talking about the bad people, we're talking about the, the common sense of the people, generally, as a whole. We're not talking about individuals, individual cases, we're talking about general concept, yeah? So if you go the root of it, because we need to have an objective morality, correct? This part of the morality, this objective morality, where did it, where did it come from? Where? I will tell you, from, from atheistic point of view, they will say, people they found, since your parents, they were good to you, they have done something good to you, we should be good to them back, yes? Yeah? And do, don't even you... if they were bad to you, you would be good to them. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah still, 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 because they are the your parents. So can you imagine, the one who has created you, and you are not good to, to the creator? Don't you think being ungrateful to God is worse than being ungrateful to your parents? Yeah? So you should be grateful to God. Now, how to be grateful to God? How? How to be grateful to God? As I mentioned to you, God has to communicate to us to tell us how to be grateful to Him, correct? Do you agree? Yeah. So, so let's dem we are demonstrating one, one step, one step, one, 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 one step. So we have accepted, there's one God. We have accepted this God has created for a purpose. And we have accept accepted to be grateful to, to this God, correct? Yeah? Now, how to be grateful to this God? Is it the way that you think, or the way that I think, or the way that he think, or the, the, way, the way that what God wants? Which way? So if we want, so what God wants, don't you think that God has to communicate this to us? And that was, I suppose, the Bible and then the Torah. Yes, yeah, basically, yes, exactly. Basically, he has to send prophets and messengers conveying his message to us telling us how to be grateful to him, yes? Now, this message, which one? Is it Judaism? Is it Christianity? Is it Islam? Is it Hinduism? Which one? I will say any, any religion that eliminate any religion that it, it, it kind of inclined or affirms that there is multiple gods, we, elim we eliminate it, yeah? Because we already demonstrated this in the beginning. So Hinduism, eliminate it. Christianity, three gods, three. Yeah, I don't understand that one. Yeah, so it's eliminated. Now it, we come to the two mainly monotheistic faiths, which is Islam and Judaism. Now Judaism, yeah, of course, over the years, let alone as well God to favor certain people just because of their lineage and the otherness. Again, we're talking about God, the all-powerful, God is justice, God is kind. That's again, it doesn't fit, befit, you know. They're also not evangelical, they don't spread the religion. Yeah. You know, the Jewish so, is zero point. 
two of one of one percent. Yeah. It's so like ten million people to thirty million people. I think. So, so, so that's why then you came to the conclusion of Islam. You said you studied Islam. Yeah. Now, how we know that Islam is a true faith from God? This is the question. Now, since there is one religion, which is now we came to this conclusion, how we know that Islam is the true faith of God, is the true religion of God? Now, if I demonstrate to you, Islam is the true religion of God, and God has revealed the Quran and has sent the Prophet, peace be upon him, Muhammad, والسلام, to be a prophet of God, you will we accept in the beginning, you accept to be, will be accepting to be Muslim, because you will follow the truth, correct? Yeah? Now, Islam based on the Quran, yeah, mainly, and of course the authentic hadith, the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But the source, the main source, is the Quran. Let's say, and as well the the source and the other sources, the hadith of the Prophet peace be upon him. The Quran. Now, if we demonstrate that the Quran came from God, that means it's a book of God, it's a book of guidance. It will literally tick all the boxes about the existence of God about the purpose of our creation and about the you know the prophethood of Muhammad peace be upon him and the truthfulness of the message of Islam. They must tick all these boxes. Yeah? So firstly the Quran, 1400 years ago, this Quran revealed upon Muhammad peace be upon him. Yeah? And by the way, he was one of the Prophet and Messenger of God. We, be, we believe that Allah has sent, Allah means the one God, by the way, in Arabic. He has sent many prophets and messengers, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon all of them. But the religion, again, they've been corrupt and chained, except Islam, st stay as it is. Now, the Quran, yeah, first of all, you will find the second, the very second chapter of the Quran, talking about a verse. They said, this book, yeah, can you can, can pass me the Quran, please? Brother, can I take a picture with you? Yes, inshallah, but quickly, we need to show the... Yeah, okay, brother, let's let's finish this. Yeah, okay, inshallah. Quickly. Thank you, brother. All right, no problem. Thank you very much. No problem, brother. Salaam alaikum. All right. Come, sister. Look. So what it says here in this book, this book, yeah, about which there is no doubt. So the first challenge, it has no doubt beyond any doubt and as guidance for those who are conscious of Allah one who wanted to be God conscious now as well you will find in the very second page yeah you will find in the very second page yeah yeah one second here and here they said look at this and in a very second, and if you are in doubt about what we have sent down, which is the Quran, upon our servant, i.e. Muhammad, peace be upon him, then produce a surah, which is a chapter, and like therefore, and call upon your witnesses, i.e. supporters, other than Allah, if you should be truthful. So God is saying, this book has no doubt. If you have any doubt, produce something similar to this, look for it, and bring everyone that you know, all the supporters that you need, all the equipment that you need, just do that and just do it. Just produce one single chapter of this book. So this is, this is what we call the eternal challenge. It is the eternal challenge from God to the people. Now the Quran, by the way, this is English translation. The Quran was revealed upon Muhammad, peace be upon him, in Arabic. I'm an Arab. The language of the Quran and Arabic language is one of the most sophisticated language, by the way. And the language of the Quran is more sophisticated than that, as the structure of the Quran. And, and God has challenged the Arabs at that time, who are the people of the language, the ones who are known with their poetries, challenge him in their language, saying to them, okay, this is the language of the Quran, and I challenge you with this to produce something similar to this. Just try to produce something similar to this. The smallest surah is only smaller three surah, lines. three lines. They couldn't do that. It's a challenge. That's only the language of the Quran. As it is so, it came in so in harmonial, in, in, in a poetric, in a, in a mulady way. It's a beautiful way, the Quran, that is. And at the same time, it's not just only this, and it has information, deep information. Yeah? Deep information. Now the question is, have you studied some science? Okay. What do you think, what do you think, 
the deepest point any diver could die 1400 years ago. Tell me, 1400 years ago, not last, not last century. Tell me the deepest point any diver could die. Can you can you assume? They said the diver, the free diver. They said someone reached to 50 meters or yeah. 50 40. Meters or so. They said this. Yeah. Can someone tell us what's happening deep in the ocean, 1400 years? Is is it ability? Is there someone able to do that? Is there? Huh? Allah. Allah. Allah able to send that. That is what we are saying. Yes. Now. I, there's you, you, some crazy things in the ground. Yes, of course, those amazing things. Amazing things. That you see here, how Allah described the darkness in deep on the bottom of the ocean, describe it. Not say just pitch dark and finish. No, detailed darkness, detailed. Like someone who's deep in the bottom of the ocean. Above him, there is a wave. Above the wave, there is another wave. Talking about the sea currents, talking about the, the waves the underneath, underneath the surface waves. So there are waves. They are discovered recently. In the 50s or 60s is when it was discovered the currents. When they discovered this, just one moment. 1950s yeah. or 60s is when they discovered that there were not just the currents on the top of the ocean, but there were currents that the currents could flow this way on top of the ocean, but deep down there's another current going the exact opposite way. Okay, I will come to So you see here, all of these things tells you how come Muhammad, who is illiterate man, peace be upon him, illiterate man, doesn't have the access of the knowledge of his time, let alone the knowledge that's yet to come after, and yet will say these amazing things. Historical facts, Bible and the Torah got wrong, basically not about the Torah, the Bible, the Bible and the Old Testament, the New Testament, yeah? They got it wrong. The original Torah is the truth, but the, the, the Gospels, well, sorry, the, 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 the Bible and the Old, Old Testament and New Testament, they got it wrong about certain historical facts, and it's discovered recently that it is true as Islam described. For example, the title Pharaoh during the time of Moses, which is 1,000 years after Joseph, peace be upon him, and the title of the king during his time was king, not a pharaoh. And in the Bible, when you need to say pharaoh there, pharaoh here, pharaoh everywhere. Were it there? No. The king of Egypt during the time of Joseph was, was, was the title of the king at the time of Joseph was king. That's what God described in the Quran, king. And we discovered now recently that the Hyksos ruled Egypt during the time of Joseph. And that's why they, and, and Hyksos was Mediterranean reign, who ruled Egypt, took over Egypt, and they were never called pharaohs. Who taught Muhammad about this time? Tell me. They couldn't even read hieroglyphics until the early 1900s. Uh, yeah. Who told him? Tell me. I, guess, I, guess. You, you, I, need, I need to hear it. Who taught him? Allah. Allah. Now, does it make sense that Islam is the true faith of God? Yes. Now? I, I cannot doubt the consequences. Good. So that's why, sister, we have accepted all these things. The existence of one God, the purpose of our creation, the truthfulness of the message of Islam, and the Prophet of Muhammad, peace be upon him. We demonstrated that. Now, what we have agreed in the beginning, that if it makes sense to you, then you will be accepting Islam. That's what, this was the agreement. So now we are inviting you to Islam for eternal salvation in the hereafter. Yeah? And that's what we are inviting you. And that's the agreement which we have agreed in the beginning of our conversation. Now, do you want to accept Islam as you have agreed? Tomorrow is not guaranteed, too. One second, let's have it. And... I don't feel it's that easy. What? I'm not saying it's easy. I'm saying... I'm not, I'm not saying it's easy. What I'm saying is the truth. Even though it sometimes comes difficult, but you will find ease later on. That's what matters, sister. And you will gain the pleasure of God. And actually, if you accept Islam now, you will be the best Muslim walk on earth. Do you know why? Because you start. You, do, do you know why? Because all your previous sins will be cleansed. Yeah, I know. That's what matters. That's what you saw so in Islam. You start high. Yeah. In Islam, you, but you need to maintain it. That's what matters. So that's why, sister, 
And I believe you, uh, you believe in God. And I believe you believe in Islam and you have accepted this. So sister, without reluctance, repeat after me the Shahada, testify and become a member of two, of two billion Muslims on earth. All of us are your family. All of us are your brothers and sisters in Islam. And we are here for you to teach you. We'll not leave you alone. We'll be there for you to teach you, to educate you. And I'm there for you if you need any help and any assistance, I will be there for you. That's what, that's what matters. And we, we, we help whatever we can help, we help. That's what we do. That's because you'll be our sister in Islam. Yeah? So that's why, sister, don't be reluctant. And, 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 and this is the agreement, first of all. Second, and I know you are a courageous woman, mashallah, which is good. And at the same time, just do what, what you found the truth. So the, the truth we agreed in the beginning is to be followed. Yeah? Not just to be admired, to be followed. So that's why, sister, repeat after me. Do you yeah? mind if I take some time? I will tell you something. This is not advisable for you to take some time. Do you know why? Because now your reluctance is basically, you know, there is nothing new you're going to find, first. And even in, uh, there is nothing new you're going to find, it's as it is. The argument is the same, the, the concept is the same, and the, 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 uh, you know, the, the details which we have discussed is the same. But what will happen, what, what makes you to be reluctant now, is exactly the same one. We know him, we know this guy. When you were a young girl and you did something wrong at home, and you're supposed to say sorry to your mom, and your mom told you to, you should say sorry because you were wrong, and you know you are wrong, you know this is the truth, what you should do, you should say sorry, but you are reluctant, you don't want to take that. You don't have the courage to say it. It is the same one who played your mind then, the same one who plays your mind now, telling you, wait, take time, think about it. It's not easy. No, it's easy, sister. It's so easy. It's only a single sentence. And that sentence, it brings you to the, to, to the, to, to the religion that you are born. If I'm gonna take a step like this, this is not the environment for me. Yeah? This is not the environment for me. Yeah. Okay. You want to take it off the camera? We, we could go. We could go somewhere here. No problem. We could go somewhere here. No problem. By the way, by the way, all of us are gonna be happy for you. So don't. don't all of us. You see here. You are surrounded. By the way, you are surrounded with people who cares about you. You are surrounded with people who loves you. Do you feel their love? Do you feel their love? Yeah. yeah. So that's why you are not surrounded with people who, who hate you. You are surrounded with people who love you and wanted the best for you. And you will see that's, I know it's overwhelming, but it's easy. Just go with the flow. Simple as that. Repeat after me. Trust me. You will not be, you are, I will not mislead you. Just repeat after me. Please. Just, yeah. Just. You want to be off, off the camera? Uh, off the camera? Off the camera? Come. The camera? Okay. Just off the camera. No, come here. Eh? Just, yeah? Off the camera, come here. No problem. It doesn't matter where it is, sister. It matters who you are. And you are a true God believer, sister. Listen, sister, listen to me. Listen to me. Yeah, focus on what I'm saying. Yeah? You are a, a believer. You're already Muslim. Yeah? So, since you believe in one God, which you accept, you believe Muhammad is a prophet and messenger of God, which you accept, you believe the Quran is a message from God, which you accept. That's it. You are a Muslim already. You're already there. You just only need to say it with your tongue, out loud, that's all. Nothing, there is no magic. Okay, I know. If I promise you I will. Just okay. not in these circumstances. I will tell you not something. Listen, this is, you are going against the agreement. <laughs> you cannot hold me. No, I hold you, I will hold you with this, because this that's is, all. This subject is too serious. For yeah? Us. Yeah, it is very serious, by the way, even though, that's why, that's the agreement which we agreed in the beginning. That's a good thing. But it's not a bad thing, because you, you were in the beginning, because you knew if it's the truth, you will follow it. And now what makes you reluctant is the, you know, the waswasa, which is what you call it, whispers. You, not necessarily you hear things, but inside your heart telling you to wait. But actually, I will tell you something. We generally say, Allah says in the Quran, told us in the Quran, if there is, if we been have the waswasa, to say, A'udhu Billahi Min Shabbat Allah. To seek refuge in Allah from the whispers of the devil. Yeah? It's not the whispers. I'm not socially influenced. Okay. No, not social, by the way. He's not social guy. No, no, no. He's, he's inside. 
No, no, no. It's not something which is someone there around you telling you. No, no. It's not like that. Uh, again, the same concept that makes you to be reluctant when you are a young girl to say sorry when you are wrong, the same one is the same one is doing now the same thing. It's the same one because we know him. Uh, it's basically, uh, that's, that's what it, what, what it does. So the, it wants us to be away from God. It wants us to be away from the truth. To stop yeah. So that's why it's easy and simple. And we are, we're, not telling, we're not inviting you to something wrong. We're inviting you to the truth, which you found it true. Okay. My wife is very similar to you. She's very, I remember when, I, when my wife took Shahada, I remember we were speaking for a long time and she didn't, she, she said she believed in everything. I went through the five pillars in a long conversation and then at the end I say, well you believe in this so why don't you just say it and immediately her, her face switched and she said, I don't want to say it, I don't, and I said, there's so many reasons you, that you should say it. If you be, first of all, like he says, if you really believe, if, you, if, you, if you've gone through everything and you believe, then what's stopping you? The second thing is, nothing is guaranteed. We don't know if we're going to go to sleep tonight, if we're going to wake up the next morning. You don't know this. This is not we wish. I wish. I wish we have the time. I wish we know. And that's the secret of that. So God wants us. When the chance comes to us, take it. If, you, if the chance comes to you, don't leave it. So if I told you, if you do this, you're going to have one million pound or something. So you know what? Maybe yeah, it makes it. No, no I'm not talking about do, do something else. Yeah. But you see, that when the chance comes, this is the chance. Chance of salvation. It's better than all the money in the world. We, are, we, don't, we don't say to you, you're going to earn money or something. We're not saying this to you. But we're saying to you, you gain salvation. You know who you are. Then, as soon as you take shahada, as soon as you take shahada, by the way, you realize that you are born with this. It will come to your memory that this is the purpose that Allah has created me for. Then, it will take, as I mentioned, it will take all the boxes, basically. That's how it is. So that's why my sister. Trust me, I will not mislead you. I'm not here to mislead you. I'm here, I'm here to guide you to the right path. Okay, good. If you are accepting, okay, all right, we'll we'll, we'll move away. No, we'll, no, we'll go away. No problem. We'll have coffee somewhere there, and then we'll 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 take the shahad there. Yeah, we'll 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 anyway. We we'll we'll speak to the sister, inshallah, off the camera because she a bit overwhelmed. No problem. That's fine. We could go to the have have a coffee there or something, and then after that we'll speak at least in a more relaxed. Yeah. All right, my brothers and sisters. May Allah reward you and bless you all. Inshallah, we'll get you the good news. Inshallah, Taala. Hopefully, Inshallah, she will take shahada off the camera. Inshallah. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, sister Taylor. Alhamdulillah, she took shahada just now. She wanted. She preferred to take it off the camera. Alhamdulillah, she took it. She became Muslim, alhamdulillah. Please remember her in your du'a that Allah keep her steadfast upon Islam, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.